Up on Mountain News this morning, we're taking a moment to celebrate KCEOC's 60 years of service to the community. And as a part of a second chance month, Governor Bashir announced some uplifting news for struggling Kentuckians. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Madison Carmouche. It is 5.30 this morning and we're going to check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast. Happy Friday, Madison, and a good Friday morning to everyone. It's 64 outside our door with the rain coming in right now at WYMT. And temperature-wise this morning, cool off to the east, but nonetheless, a lot of us are basically in the low and mid-60s to start off this Friday morn. All right, the pinpoint Doppler radar showing some of the action getting into Breathitt and Perry counties. This section here coming into our western counties, and we're going to keep an eye on some of the action coming into northern portions of Pulaski County. Again, heavy bursts of rain along and north of the Hal Rogers as you make your way up toward the Mountain Parkway. And here, as you make your way, Waynesburg, Somerset. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that. This little bending, bowing type of protrusion could be indicative of some wind gusts here that could be approaching if not exceeding 40 miles per hour. So again, along and north of 80, Hell Rogers there coming from Dunville into northern portions of Pulaski County. All right, the planner for today, once we get this complex out of here, scattered showers, maybe a thunder shower and a high near 70. More about your first alert seven day forecast in a few moments. Madison. All right, Tim, thank you. Celebrating its 60th year of serving the community, the KCEOC Community Action Agency is continuing its mission of helping people to help themselves. WYMT's RJ Johnson shares how organization leaders are finding success. For 60 years, KCEOC has worked to help people in the Cumberland Valley region change their lives. We're here to help people help themselves and to get people out of poverty. In 1964, President Lyndon B. Johnson saw the need to address the war on poverty. Out of that need, KCEOC and 22 other community action agencies were created to address early childhood education, housing, food assistance, and more. KCEOC President and CEO Paul Dole says the organization's founders walked out of the national office in Washington, D.C with a grant of $250,000. They came back here and set up in business. And back in 64, that was a lot of money. Uh, but it's, it's grown over the years. Uh, but now we, we operate somewhere between 25 to $30 million a year, depending on what, what projects we have got going. Dole says creating these projects has greatly impacted the community. However, there is an ongoing issue that they are still working to address, housing. We, we need safe places to stay, safe housing. If we want the community to grow, you know, it's, it's got to be developed fully. Once you secure their uh, safe housing, it's much easier to prosper and get a job and, uh, and be able to be successful in life. But if you have to worry about where you're going to lay your head down that night, everything else just goes out the window. He says in order to create housing, staff members work each and every day, finding resources and funding to help put up the walls and lay down the foundation for helping them to the position where they are today. I think a lot of the reason it has worked is because we have excellent staff that is dedicated to the mission and a board of directors that is dedicated to the mission. It's very stressful, uh, they, but you know they, they know what the job is and they are dedicated to doing that. Recognizing human potential, improving communities, and creating opportunities for change. We are one of the leading, area, leading groups doing homeless services and housing in this area. Uh, we, uh, we participate uh, quite heavily with Kentucky Housing Corporation to provide different programs in, in, throughout the Cumberland Valley area. Throughout the last 60 years, Dole says they have kept their promise of changing people's lives and embodying the spirit of hope. The 2024 East Kentucky Leadership Award for Organization of the Year goes to KCEOC Community Action Partnership. 
We will continue our profiles of East Kentucky Leadership Award winners through the end of next week. The East Kentucky Leadership Conference will be held next Thursday and Friday, April 25th and 26th in Corbin. You can learn more on WYMT.com and get your tickets by going to EKLF.org. A man is behind bars after Pulaski County deputies say he lit a house on fire. Deputies say they were called to a home in Somerset Wednesday afternoon. There, they determined DeMarion Splunge intentionally set fire to a home. No one was inside. Deputies arrested Splunge and charged him with arson and wanton endangerment. He is in the Pulaski County Jail. In Laurel County, a southern Kentucky man is accused of stabbing a person and running off. London police arrested Terry Lynch. They say a man at SNR Apartments was stabbed multiple times and told officers his attacker left the scene. Police eventually found Lynch in a field and arrested him. He is facing multiple charges. The victim is recovering in the hospital. Yesterday morning, Bell County Sheriff's Office conducted a traffic stop in Pineville after seeing a vehicle swerving on the road multiple times. After stopping the vehicle, officials questioned and the, questioned the driver and passenger, 46-year-old James Stacy Reynolds. Reynolds presented a pipe with a substance believed to be crystal meth after officials asked him if he was in possession of anything illegal. He was later taken to the Bell County Detention Center where officials say they found suspected heroin on him. Reynolds is facing multiple charges, including first degree possession of a controlled substance, resisting arrest, public intoxication and more. The driver was let go. A former juvenile detention facility worker admits to breaking a 15 year old boy's arm out of anger. Nathaniel Lumpkins pleaded guilty on April 8th. According to the Lexington Herald leader, the incident happened in January of 2019 at the Woods Bend Youth Development Center. Staffers were trying to calm the teen down when Lumpkins stepped in, escalated the situation and broke the teen's wrist out of anger. Lumpkins faces up to 10 years in prison when he is sentenced in August. Governor Andy Bashir discussed National Second Chance Month in his Team Kentucky update yesterday. Governor Bashir says more than 192,000 inmates now back inside society have had their voting rights restored. He said Kentucky has 10 recovery ready certified counties and they have passed legislation helping businesses seek treatment for employees. Governor Bashir described second chance opportunities as a win win. It helps our families, it helps our communities, and it helps fill open jobs in our workforce. A second chance can rebuild a life and it reduces the chances of someone returning to prison. Governor Bashir announced officials have launched a website called secondchance.ky.org, I mean .gov. He said those looking for fresh starts can find job opportunities and resources through that website. And one nonprofit from Florida made the drive to get Kentuckians employed. The Bluegrass Community Church in Lexington hosted Better Together's Job Fair, aiming to help people with barriers such as previous incarceration. The resources available included free one-on-one -on -one job coaching sessions to review resumes and interviewing skills, free haircuts and clothing to help candidates feel and look their best, some even walked in unemployed, but by the end of the day, they left with a new job. My background limited me on a lot of options, uh, and that someone took a chance on me, and you know, doing that made me just remember how hard it is for these folks to come back into society, because I know what it's like. Officials say this is not the first time this job fair has been here, but it is the largest crowd they've seen so far. Officials with Firestone Air Ride have announced the opening of two new distribution centers, one of those in Williamsburg. In a news release, officials say the, to the total investment of approximately $26 million will enhance the company's ability to serve its customers. Officials say the investment in Williamsburg builds upon a recent plant expansion to meet the growing demand for the company's Air Springs products. It is not known how many jobs this will provide for the area. State and county officials gathered in Jackson County to celebrate funding approval for various projects in the area. 
focus serves Clay, Jackson, Lee, Leslie and Owsley counties with a goal for helping develop parts of the county. Millions of dollars were secured for dozens of projects. State Representative Tim Truitt says they are working to better the future of their communities. Rural counties in eastern Kentucky uh, working together to improve neighboring communities, neighboring counties. So uh, this is a great group. We come together today to talk about some of the some of the money that's coming back uh, from this year's state budget. Representative Truitt says it is important to continue advocating for the development of Eastern Kentucky. Still to come, the Disney on Ice cast visited Kentucky Children's Hospital before their magical performance this weekend. And the pinpoint Doppler radar this morning, a little active right now from Hazard to Jackson over toward Risner. Then we look back out toward, Risner rather, look back out toward Pulaski County. Got that complex coming in as well. Is this the trend the rest of the day? We'll let you know. Your first alert, 7-day forecast is coming up in just a few moments.